Hey guys, and welcome back to another machine learning tutorial with Python. So in today's video, we're going to be finishing up with k-means. This will be a quick video. We're just going to do a really simple implementation of k-means. Um, I'm kind of going to leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger here in terms of I'm not going to explain everything I do in here. I'm going to give you kind of some further reading for those of you that are interested in looking at that. And then as we move into more unsupervised learning algorithms, uh, so as I get into neural networks, which will be another series coming soon, excuse me, then I'll be talking more about specifically what some of the accuracy measures mean for this uh, data set because unlike other data sets, it's actually more difficult to kind of test this for accuracy and validity. So you'll see that in uh, just a second. So essentially, these are my imports here. Again, all this stuff will be up on techwithtim.net if you guys want to copy that code. The code that I showed in the last video that ran all of the, uh, what do you call it, like that image stuff, it'll be up on techwithtim.net as well that you guys can just go ahead and copy with that. Uh, so go ahead, link will be in the description and you can copy the code from there if you don't want to type it out with me. But essentially, we're going to load in our data. So uh, we've got load digits here from sklearn. This is from data sets. Uh, same thing as like load, what did we load before? I forget which one we loaded before, but we used some kind of sklearn data set. I forget what one it was, but essentially we use that. So what we'll do is we'll say digits equals uh, load underscore data and now load digits is what it's called isn't it load digits and now what we're going to do is we're going to say data equals scale talk about this in a second and we'll say digits dot data so essentially this dot data part right is all of our features so we're going to scale all of our features down so that they're within the value negative one and one and the reason we do that is because our digits by default are going to have large values. I believe it's an RGB value or it might be like a grayscale value. I honestly don't know, um, but they're going to be large. So by scaling them down, we're going to save time on the computations, especially because we're doing Euclidean distance between points. So having smaller values will just be better and it'll lead kind of to less outliers and all that. Right. So it'll make things faster. Essentially, that's what we're doing with scale. Uh, now we're going to get our uh, our labels. So what we'll do is say y equals data dot targets like that uh, target or targets I want to say it's targets but we'll see anyways so we've got our targets now and what I'm gonna do now is just set the amount of clusters that we're gonna look for the amount of centroids to make so we could do this fancy thing where we do like NP dot unique um, and we get of data dot target so of Y and we do the length of that and that would be like the dynamic way to do it uh, if we were gonna change this data set or we could just type 10 because we're gonna have 10 digits so i mean feel free i just want to show you that way in case you want to see how you get it the amount of different classes or like classifications for a data set dynamically you can use what i just did so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the amount of instances so like the amount of numbers that we have that we're going to classify and um what do you call it? the amount of features that go along with that data so to do this i'm just going to say samples uh features i think that's how you spell features is equal to let's say data dot shape the reason this works is because if we have shape uh, it kind of looks something like this like it'll look like let's say we have like a thousand instances and like it's by 728 uh, then it'll just decompose this for us and that's how we can do that in Python pretty straightforward you guys probably already know that and now what we're gonna do is we're actually I'm gonna bring in a, uh, a function that we used in the last video uh, you saw when I did all that kind of the images were popping up and all that and we saw like the centroids and it was like a nice graph on matplotlib well they have a really nice way of scoring this and you know I could come up with my own way to score this and do the accuracy but why don't we just take it straight from sklearn uh, as that's the module we're using so I'm gonna, just going to copy this in and we'll talk about kind of what this is doing uh, it's it's a big function just be aware okay so essentially uh, this actually reminds me now I have to import metrics from sklearn so we'll say from sklearn import metrics and sklearn has a bunch of uh, functions in there that will automatically score our uh, like supervised learning or unsupervised learning algorithms now we can see that we have a ton of different ones here so completeness score v measure score adjusted rand score mutual info uh, silhouette score and honestly I don't know what all of them do there's a lot of them here all I know is kind of the range to what you're looking for for some of these different scores because they have like a crazy math background behind how they score the model and get like the best accuracy and all of them represent kind of a different thing. Now, essentially what we do um, here, right, 
is we have this bench k means and we're going to create a classifier down here. We're just going to call this function on our classifier. It's going to print out all this information. What this allows us to do essentially is train like a ton of different classifiers and just score them by calling this function. So essentially what we do is we give it the classifier. It's going to fit our data, which is another argument um, to that classifier. And then it's just going to uh, use a bunch of different things to score it. So essentially forward like homogeneity score, I think that's how you say it. Uh, we're going to take our Y values, which are up here, right? So all our targets, we're going to compare them to the labels that our estimator uh, gave for each of our data. Now remember, because uh, this is an unsupervised learning algorithm and we don't give it the Y values when we train, it automatically generates a Y value for every single test data point that we give it. So we don't actually have to split into test and training data because, well, it never, it doesn't know to start what our test data is. So we can actually just compare the test data labels to uh, what our estimator or our classifier estimated, right? Like what it predicted each label was. And that allows us to uh, kind of train on maybe less data per se, because we don't need to have like that training data, testing data, uh, and do like that split, whatever, split test train uh, thing that we used in all the other videos. So that's uh, good to know. For this metric here, uh, all this is doing essentially is we're just saying that when we do like the silhouette score, we're going to use Euclidean distance. And that's just like the absolute distance between two points or two vectors um, in the space. There's some other distances that we could mess around with, but we're just going to use e Euclidean for now. So to make our classifier, we're going to say classifier equals K means. Now this takes a few different uh, parameters. Is, is this incorrect? Is it a capital M? Yeah, it is. Okay. So for this classifier, we need to define, first of all, the amount of centroids. We need to give it the amount of times we're going to actually run the classifier. We can give it the maximum iterations. There's there's a ton of different parameters, and I'll actually show you here. So if I go to this one, uh, you can read through like all of the different parameters, and they kind of go like this, okay? So the first one we're going to do is n underscore clusters. Uh, and this is just going to be set equal to however many things we're trying to classify, right? So for the clusters, we'll say n underscore clusters. And this is going to be the same as like the amount of centroids, essentially. Uh, we'll say it is equal to k. And that's what we've defined up here as 10. Okay, what else do we need? Let's go back here. And I'm just going to read these off because I honestly don't remember all of them. Init. Okay. So what this will do uh, is remember how I was saying we can have our centroids, like those little x's in uh, random positions when we generate them? Well, that is correct. But we can also have them in somewhat of a more, uh, somewhat of in a, a way that makes a bit more sense. And... I don't know exactly how it does it mathematically, but I'm pretty sure it just lays them out so they're like equal distance from each other on the uh, grid or on in the space. And we can do that if we just set k means plus plus. So you can play around with either choosing random or k means plus plus and see if you're getting a better classifier. It shouldn't make a massive difference, um, but k means plus plus essentially is just going to change the location of your uh, initial centroids so that maybe it runs a bit faster and you don't have to iterate as many times so for a knit i'm actually just going to use random for right now uh it doesn't really matter that much and a knit or a knit i think it's a knit equals uh random okay so let's go back here so what else do we need and a knit okay so this is the amount of times we're going to run the algorithm so what actually is going to happen is because we're randomly or because sorry we are randomly kind of placing these centroids we might sometimes get a better result by running the algorithm with a different random location for the centroid. So that's essentially what this is saying. Uh, it's saying the number of times k-means algorithm will run with different centroid seeds. So that's like how many times we're going to randomly generate the centroids for the first iteration. So we can run this 10 times and then essentially it's going to take the best one and that's going to be our classifier. I hope that makes sense to you. So for n init, uh, we can set it equal to 10 just so we kind of have this here. That's the default value. Uh, you can increase it. Obviously, if you increase it, it's going to take longer. If you decrease it, it's going to be shorter. Max iterations. So I recommend you just leave this as 300. But essentially, remember I was saying we're going to continually keep repeating the process until eventually nothing changes. Well, to do that uh, could take a very long time, especially if we have a ton of data. So this is automatically going to cap us at 300 iterations. Now, if you have, if you want the best possible classifier and you want to make sure that uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter how time, how much time it takes, you can set this to like, actually, I don't know if there's like an infinite number, but I think you can just set it to like a very high value and hopefully it never even gets to that because it'll just have like a perfect classifier by that point, if that makes sense. Okay. So these ones now we're kind of going into some more um, super like hyper parameters that I'm not really going to talk about. 
verbose like if you guys want to read through this I'll, I have all the links on my website and in the description so you can see but essentially that's all we kind of need for our classifier so now we will pass this actually to bench k means so we'll say bench k means we'll give it our classifier which is gonna be clf we'll give it the name which i'm just gonna say is one in this case and we'll give it our data which is just called data and now if i i don't know if i have this as the right configuration right now let's edit this uh k means tutorial i believe it's working file yes it is so we'll apply that and let's just run this and see uh what we're getting np.n array object has no attribute targets Pretty sure it's target. Let's try this. Y equals target dot data. Uh, this I think it might be digits dot data. Digits dot targets. Let's try this one. No targets. Let's try target. Sorry guys. No attribute target. Okay, give me one second. Yeah. So uh, it probably helped if I spelled target correctly. Wow. All right. So target. And in Nick on unexpected keyword n underscore cluster. So I believe that should be clusters. And there we go. Okay, so awesome. So now it's printing out all of our accuracy scores uh, for us. Okay, so we have 69417, which actually I believe is just giving us yeah, the inertia. Okay. And then we have uh, all of these different scores, which are, will represent like homogeneity, completeness, V measure, adjusted RAND, all that. Now, I'm not going to talk about what these mean. Essentially, the higher, the better for most of them, uh, not all of them. But if you want to read, and I recommend you do, uh, I'll leave this link in the description. And it essentially goes through what all of the different uh, scores mean. And it'll give you like a mathematical... Uh, like derive the mathematical mathematical equations for you um, and you can kind of look at that and it's pretty interesting so I'm not gonna talk about that we will do that in the neural networks so I'll talk about what all these mean uh, but for right now I'll leave the link if you guys want to read that and that's gonna be it for this machine learning tutorial if you guys enjoyed these tutorials please make sure you let me know in the comments join my Twitter join my discord um, and neural networks will be coming soon in the meantime I'm probably thinking about doing some kind of discord bot uh, tutorial maybe we'll do some Kivi app development let me know what you guys want to see down below and with that being said I'll see you again in another video